Good evening everybody, welcome to Axel's Wrestling Review. As always, I am your host, Darren Dyer, also known in the Twitter world as Axel Mulligan. However you want to refer to me, I don't care, I've probably been called worse. I'm going to be doing, instead of doing uh, a long show every weekend where I review NXT and Ring of Honor, I'll be reviewing uh, Ring of Honor during the week. And that's basically because nobody really wants to hear my voice for 45 minutes. And um, it kind of breaks up the week a bit as well, you know, so I could be giving my NXT reviews on the weekend as always, as I've always done, and I'll be giving a Ring of Honor review on usually around a Wednesday or a Thursday, hopefully depends on what I've got going on during the week, so at the moment my social life is dead, so yeah, but come March that's when things start to pick up, I go to a lot of gigs and stuff, so March is when that sort of thing starts to pick up here in uh, not so sunny Bristol as it is, um, but yeah, that's just a little insight as to what I'll be doing, um, I owe Mr. Chris Bradish an apology, we were chatting last night um, about the review that I did, sort of back in Roman Reigns and the Ring of uh, the Royal Rumble pay per view, etc. And he rightly pointed out that I was wearing an indie shirt and an indie hat. And what I said to him was, "Well, the next time I do an indie show, I will wear a WWE shirt." Well, I'm an apology. I couldn't actually find one. I have no idea where all my WWE shirts have gone. I've got about ten of them. Like you know, I've got Bad News Barrett, RVD. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the NWO, Ryback, Christian, I've got a few more as well. Uh, but where are those shirts have gone, I've absolutely no idea. So I just picked out a Ronnie James Dio shirt. So apologies to you, Chris, but that's the way it is, brother. Next time, if I if I remember to, I will try and find a WWE shirt. But as I said, I couldn't, couldn't locate the whereabouts of my WWE shirts. Um, about 20 minutes ago, basically, when I uh, got changed after coming home from work. Um, so, yeah, as I say, I'll be doing uh, a Ring of Honor review during the week. I'll be doing an NXT review on a weekend, just to break the week up a little bit, you know, see how it goes. Big thank you as well. Um, this will be the last I talk about WWE. Big thank you to, as well to everybody who uh, watched or listened to the Royal Rumble Ramble. It's been up on YouTube for less than two days, and it's already had 86 hits. That is my third highest rated show on YouTube. So a big thank you to everybody who's watched that. If you've not watched it, just go onto my channel, make sure you subscribe, obviously, and it'll be in there. It's episode number 40. I've got a lot of positive reviews from it, so thank you everybody who listened. And to anybody who hasn't listened, just take a look and uh, watch me having a bitch and a moan about the, w about the WWE fans. Uh, before I get started with this uh, review of Honor, as I'm gonna, as I'm gonna be calling it, um, there's two uh, indie shows coming up um, in the UK. Um, we got one this weekend, um, which is Saturday the 31st of January. Pro Wrestling Chaos at the Bower Club in Filton, Bristol. Um, tickets on sale at prowrestlingchaos.co.uk forward slash upcoming hyphen events. The link will appear somewhere on the screen as I'm talking now. Um, not too sure on the prices but as I say all details are at that link the second one is uh, Attack Pro Wrestling uh, for their Middle Witch debut uh, for <laughs> the show's called Wrestling to Make Love To and it takes place on Valentine's Night in Middle Witch Town Hall all details and tickets available at attackprowrestling.bigcartel.com again that's my prompt to put the link here for that particular show I've seen both companies before, both local to myself. Um, I went to, uh, I've been to two pro wrestling chaos shows, both absolutely fantastic. And I went to my first Attack Pro Wrestling show just before Christmas. The show was called Santa Claus is Still Real to Us, damn it, or Santa's Still Real to Us, damn it. Uh, it was a brilliant show. It's probably the most fun I've ever had at a wrestling show. I've been to two WWE shows in the past. I've only, you could count on one hand how many wrestling shows I've been to. Well, six fingers, because I've been to six shows. Um, but the attack show that I've been to was by far the most fun that I've ever had at a wrestling show. Aside from when I met Adam Cole, my favourite wrestler. Adam Cole, baby! And that's just to get that out there because something I've always wanted to do on camera for some reason. I don't know why. I've just fucking murdered it. I don't give a shit. Review of Honour. I'm talking about Adam Cole. As much as he wasn't on the show, the Kingdom kicked off the show against the Briscoes. As was made last week, uh, Mark Briscoe laid down the challenge to uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. 
One thing I'd like to say actually about Matt Taven is he's actually been a real big breath of fresh air into the kingdom. Obviously, you know, we lost Matt Hardy to TNA and the kingdom, Maria specifically was talking about uh, Matt's coming back. Matt Taven had been away since Field of Honor. He had a fantastic cage match. I actually ranked that cage match in my top 10 matches of the year for 2014. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Matt Taven went away. He left Ring of Honor. He did a a little bit on the indie circuit, he did a show for, sorry, he did two shows for uh, Family Wrestling Entertainment um, for their refueled shows, Night 1 and Night 2, both fantastic shows, so if you haven't checked them out, get onto rfvideonow.com, find that on there. Actually, Night 1 is available on YouTube free of charge, so definitely check that one out. Um, but yeah, Matt Taven, he's just been such a breath of fresh air into the kingdom, you know. Um, I wouldn't say when Hardy was there it got to a bit of a stagnant point because Matt Hardy was still on top of his game as far as his Ring of Honor game was concerned. You know, his final match was for the Ring of Honor World Championship against Michael Elgin last summer. I think that was during the Summer Heat Tour. Um, but, you know, Matt Taven, you know, is, is just a different dynamic of wrestler in, in comparison to Matt Hardy. And he, he, it works, you know. He's good friends with Mike Bennett off camera. He's good friends with Adam Cole off camera. And, you know, they've had some good matches as well over the TV title a few years ago so it's definitely um, worth investing into the kingdom now that Matt Taven's there I'm not saying it wasn't when Matt Hardy was there but it definitely is now that Matt Taven's there because he just, just brings a whole new dimension to the kingdom you know he's more of a high flying wrestler as well um, going back to the match that he had at Field of Honor last year where he um, jumped off the top of a cage Jimmy Snooker style you know as much as a lot of people have, um, have done that in previous times, or sorry, recent times, since, well, since Jimmy did that in whatever year it was, now I forget, 1970 something, 1980 something, Matt Taven was, was by far the best that I've seen, so kudos to you, Matt Taven. And as well, anybody who listens to, who doesn't listen to the Sunday Segway podcast, but is a Matt Taven fan, make sure you check out their last two shows. You can find them on Podomatic, you can find them on YouTube, uh, you can find them on Twitter at Sunday Segway, Segway spelled S E G U E, Kinney. My good friend, Mr. Kinney Killer, did a interview with Matt Taven. It's over two parts, so yes, you do have to listen to two shows. Definitely worth it, though, because that is by far my favourite wrestling podcast. That's no disrespect to anybody else who does a wrestling podcast, but that is my favourite wrestling podcast, so definitely worth a listen to. So you're welcome for the plug, Kinney. Um, yeah, Briscoes versus The Kingdom. Um, very physical match. Um, the Kingdom looking quite strong um, going into you know the, the going into 2015 you know you've had Taven and Bennett who have been working away in Japan Adam Cole or right, he's injured at the moment but he had a great world championship match at uh, final battle with Jay Briscoe one of the matches of the year I thought um, but a very physical match as you'd expect between these two teams it ended in a DQ finish uh, Bennett used the title of love on uh, Jay Briscoe. He took out Mark with a chair. Mark tried getting back into the ring um, up on the apron, but he took out Mark with a chair. Um, and Maria was handed the chair, sort of to say, here you are, you do the honours. And it looked like she was going to hit a concerto to Jay Briscoe. He had his head on top of another chair. I think it was Taven had his foot on uh, Briscoe's head so he couldn't get out and go anywhere to get away and just as Maria was about to swing the save came from a very unlikely source and ODB came out she made the save and the pop that ODB got was phenomenal I thought I've not heard a pop for a female wrestler like that in a long long time so fair play to ODB because she got asses out of seats on that night Steve Carino I thought he was just going to explode in his underwear because it, his, his reaction was just Holy fucking shit, it's ODB. It was just completely unexpected. Um, so yeah, ODB comes in, she takes the chair away from Maria, and she swings it straight across Taven's head. He goes down like a sack of shit. Bennett and Maria bail from the ring. Mark Briscoe comes back into the ring. Her, uh, sorry, Mark, Jay, and ODB sit there drinking out of uh, ODB's flask. And... You know, ODB's joining uh, Ring of Honor by the looks of things. Kevin Kelly catches up to her as they're vacating the ring area and basically says, you know, what are you doing here? And she says, well, 
unlucky we're here, there's a new bitch in town and she's one dirty brisker. So that's what ODB's gonna stand for in uh, Ring of Honor. Um, obviously, you know, she's here to help them in the fight against the kingdom. I think that could be a fantastic feud now that you've got ODB involved. You know, she is a very good wrestler. Um, bam! I haven't quite got the chest. I'm catching up to ODB, but I haven't quite got the chest that she's got at the moment. Um, but, she, you know, ODB, she's a good wrestler. As I say, you know, she's a former knockouts champion in TNA, former knockouts tag team champion with Eric Young. How is that quite worked out? I don't know because I wasn't watching TNA at the time when they won the championship. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's, it's, just a, it's just a really fun addition to the roster. And I'm really looking forward to see what ODB does moving forward. Uh, I'm looking forward to see where the feud with the with the Briscoes and the Kingdom goes. To be honest with you, because Jay's kind of got two feuds on going at the moment. You know, he's got the feud going on with Tommaso Ciampa, uh, Hanson, and Michael Elgin, and then he's also got this long time feud going on with, with the Kingdom. Obviously, mainly brought on by his history with Adam Cobb. Excuse me, with Adam Cobb. But, you know, Mike Bennett's come into the scene. Matt, Matt Taven's now in the kingdom, obviously, as well. He's on the scene. And it's just escalating. And it's just so exciting to watch. You know, there's there's not a week that goes by without wanting to know what's going to happen next between the kingdom and the Briscoes. Where they go next, I don't know. Because uh, as much as Jay won't be fighting any of the members of the kingdom at uh, 13th anniversary, I'm not sure whether Mark, maybe, uh, will get a shot against one of the kingdom. I'd like to see Mark Briscoe versus uh, Michael Bennett. I think that could be a really good sort of fun match because Bennett's uh, Bennett's a very underrated wrestler as well. But you know, we'll see where they go with that. Uh, top prospect tournament up next. <laughs> this fucking guy, Beer City Bruiser, Beer City Bruiser versus Mikey Webb. Mikey Webb just really well put together. You know, he's a good looking guy. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Bob Backlund with his look. To be honest with you, um, his his actual facial looks. Um, like think of Bob Backlund back to 1980, 1981, 1982. And then you, this Mikey Webb, you know, he looks a lot like him. And then you've got the Beer City Bruiser. He just reminds me of a fucking fatter version of Husky Harris. Um, oh, it's fucking... It's got, it, to be fair as well, he's quite athletic, you know. He, uh, he, he had probably the spot of the night where he had a, a running sent on off the apron to Mikey Webb who was on the floor. And I, I, I just laughed at it because, you know, I've seen big guys doing shit like that before. But this guy, Beer City Bruiser, he does not look fucking agile by any stretch of the imagination. And he pulled that off. That was just, that was fucking brilliant. Uh, but surprised at the result, I was actually expecting Mikey Webb to pull off an upset win. And he didn't. Beer City Bruiser picked up the win with a pile driver, which he calls uh, the two-day hangover. <laughs> Basically, this guy just fucking drinks beer while he's going down to the ring. You think he's like the fucking Sandman crossed with Husky Harris or some shit. So he's drinking beer as he's going down to the ring. He's like got he fucking smokes a lot of cigars, his teeth are falling out. Um and what the commentators did, they played up well was how bad this guy stank of beer. Basically like he drinks so much beer, he drinks like forty cans of beer for a meal or some shit. And basically what they were saying was, you know, he, he basically sweats beer, he doesn't sweat water or whatever the you know, whatever normal people perspire. This guy fucking perspires beer. This guy's like my fucking idol or some shit. I wish I could drink that much. I'm a fucking lightweight. But anyway, Beer City Bruiser, as I say, he picks up the win. Um, he goes on to the semi-finals where he will face uh, Will Ferrara, which is a match I'm looking forward to because I like Will Ferrara as a wrestler. Um, you know, I, I've got him as my pick to win the tournament. I said that all along. Now that he's coming up against Bruiser, a guy who's about five times his fucking size, I'm not too sure what they're going to do with him, but certainly looking forward to it, most certainly. Um, and then in the other semi final, uh, we got, oh, sorry, we got the last first round match next week. It's Ashley Six versus Dalton Castle. The winner of that faces Donovan Dijak, who is my now number two choice to win the tournament. Um, very impressive. And he follows the Axles wrestling review page on Facebook so if anybody's got a reason to follow Axel's wrestling review if you like Donovan Dijak Donovan Dijak's bought into the show so thank you Donovan Dijak main event was uh, Christopher Daniels versus Alberto El Patron uh, 
decent match, um, but for me it was a bit too one-sided. I understand why they would have Alberto as the, uh, you know, the dominant force in the match. But you know, Christopher Daniels he played his part very well in the match. I thought, you know, I said it on Twitter at the time as I was watching it. You got the four-time world heavyweight champion or WWE world heavyweight champion Alberto Del Rio or Alberto El Patron versus arguably the greatest non-world champion of our generation. Somebody pose an argument to me as to which professional wrestler, I'm talking professional wrestling now, not sports entertainment, which professional wrestler is a better non-world champion over the last 20 years, maybe, over the last 20 years than Christopher Daniels. And you can drop a comment below, or you can tweet me at Axel Mulligan or at A Wrestling Review. And tell me where, who you think could be a better non-world champion over the last 20 years than Christopher Daniels. I'm talking guys who have wrestled for mainstream companies like Ring of Honor, TNA, WWE. If anybody can come up with anything, as I say, just let me know. Um, Jay Lethal came out mid-match. Obviously, last week, anybody who's seen the show or anybody who listened to the review last week, Jay Lethal came out mid-match. Basically, he was um, disrespected by uh, Alberto last week. Alberto didn't really sort of feel as though he disrespected uh, Jay Lethal. Um, but Jay and Truth felt that the House of Truth, Jay Lethal, you know, they big him up as they say he is the number one guy in the company, being the world television champion. And they, you know, they do call him the greatest first generation wrestler, and they call him the greatest wrestler on television, being the world television champion, the longest ever reigning world television champion to that point. Um, but he comes out mid match, he joins Carino and Kelly on commentary, in my opinion, the greatest commentary team in wrestling today. Um, and he just talked about feeling disrespected last week. And, you know, he says, you know, Albert is a good wrestler, but he's not better than me. Um, Alberto picked up the win with a cross arm breaker, as, you know, I think most people would have expected. A great show of respect afterwards between both uh, Alberto, El Patron, and between uh, Christopher Daniels. You know, two very, you know, two great, fantastic professional wrestlers. And, you know, just showed each other the respect that each other deserved you know the code of honor adhered to which is, I always like to see that you know because uh, I don't think it's something that's always kayfabe I think it can be something that is actually real you know you respect your opponent you shake his hand after a good match and this was a good wrestling match uh, but post match Jay got into the ring uh, he demanded an apology from Al Patron he started poking him Al Patron batted his hand away and he said, don't you touch me, don't touch me. That's Jay Lethal saying that to Al Patron. So Jay Lethal's poking him and pushing him and prodding him. And he poked the bear once too often and Al Patron started beating down on Jay Lethal. Uh, the House of Truth came out, Jay Diesel and uh, Truth Martini came out to make the save for Jay Lethal. But unfortunately for them, they were soon followed out by the Addiction who made the save for Alberto Al Patron. I'm expecting to see a six-man, or maybe not a six-man tag team match, but some sort of match between the House of Truth and uh, the Addiction. Maybe get Silesia involved, but it's good, you know she fights like a fucking bloke. Don't get me wrong, Silesia is hot. Silesia is hot. But you know she she fights like a dude, so why not put her in there with a bunch of dudes? Uh, but yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to that match uh, next week on the show. Jay Lethal does defend the World Television Championship versus ACH and Matt Sydal in a three-way, which I'm looking forward to that personally. And as mentioned earlier, uh, the first round, the final first round match of the top prospect tournament between uh, Dalton Castle and Ashley Six. Winner of that will face Donovan Dijak. 13th anniversary show is starting to shape up a little bit now. Um, we've got Briscoe versus Hanson versus Champa versus Michael Elgin, the former world champion. Um, for the World Championship at uh, the 13th anniversary show in Vegas. And then also announced today was uh, Jay Lethal to face Alberto El Patron. Whether that be for the World Television Championship or not, it depends obviously if whether Jay retains tomorrow, uh, sorry, next week on the show. But, you know, whatever happens, you know, I think it's just going to be an incredible night. You know, Ring of Honor certainly now to put on a pay per view. Unfortunately, Tim, we won't get our Randy Marsh movement that night. We were hoping for a, uh, AJ Styles versus El Patron. <laughs> what what can they do with AJ now? I, I don't know what they could do with AJ on the show now because I think he needed the match with Al Patron. I think Al Patron needed the match with him. 
I understand why they've gone down the route of per, uh, putting them up against Jay Lethal. Um, obviously, because you know they're starting a feud on screen. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe have them face off. ACH maybe Cedric Alexander a heel Cedric Alexander I did put out there last week what if Cedric were to turn heel I think that'd be a pretty cool move turn Cedric heel and have him face AJ Styles be an incredible wrestling match I think it'd be a purest dream anyway that's the end of the show everybody thank you everybody who's watched or listened depending on where you're at you can catch the show on YouTube SoundCloud Podomatic iTunes and on Spreaker all the links will be up on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page. Make sure you look out for me on Twitter. My personal account is at Axel Mulligan. And my uh, page for the, the show is A Wrestling Review. That's wrestling spelled without a G. Also make sure you look out for the Facebook page. Like, as I said earlier, by Donovan Dijak, Ring of Honor uh, wrestler. Uh, that's, you know, to search for Axel's Wrestling Review. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I'll be back again at some stage over the weekend. I don't know when yet with the NXT review. Uh, my grandfather's getting remarried on Saturday, which is normally when I record the show, but hopefully I'll get to do it at some stage, either Friday night after work or on Sunday. So, as I say, thank you, everybody, for listening. I will be back again at some stage this weekend with the NXT review.